So I'm going to open a uh, go and open a, a blank document, and there are different ways that we can we can utilize Copilot within Word. Uh, we've got this little icon here. If, if it's an existing document, that's all your summarization. What can you tell me about this document? Can you tell me, let's say it was a product spec sheet, what can you tell me about this product? What is the charging time of it? Um, we're going to be doing something slightly different uh, where we're going to be not necessarily generating new content, but let's say we're in HR. Let's say we're onboarding a new vendor. Let's say we're onboarding a new AI system. Um, what we've got here is we've got a policy change between a, a certain product um, or a, an internal policy change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply again slash in allows you to search for information uh so let me the old version is called policy one uh private privacy policy document and then we've got privacy policy two um and we're going to ask copart to do a comparison between the two uh, between the two privacy policies so we've got those documents in there we, we've told it what we want it to pull out and what we want it to interrogate and then we've got the actual prompt itself so compare the old and new versions of the document provided highlight the differences between the two versions attention to text formatting additional content analysis of any modifications uh, deletions um, or anything like that now what you'll notice is it will go off and it will it will start generating us, us that response now because they are two privacy policies um we've automatically categorize this and when we talk about security this has already been categorized as an internalized owner because it's an internal policy it's an internal document that we don't want to to have leaked outside of the organization by putting that internal sensitivity label onto this document it means that it can't be leaked outside of the organization internalize only you know it could be highly confidential sales data which we have above it um, and only the sales team can actually access that document so when we talk about you know data covenants it's about implementing these little types of changes where we're applying sensitivity labels and, and data loss prevention policies uh, to make sure that information is not leaked outside the organization um so here we've got a comparison of those two privacy policies. Um, one of the things that it's picked out is actually the company has decided to uh, share the content of whatever we're, we're utilizing with TikTok, which you might not want. The, you know, it's a state-owned entity, so we don't want we don't want to, to go down that route. It's also said that the payment information will be stored by the company, and if they deem fit, they will start making payments on our behalf. So again, if we're looking at this from a policy standpoint, from we're going to implement this within the business, we'd be going, no way, definitely not. You know, there's, uh, we've also got new servers being located in North Korea. Again, red flags all, all, all over. This might be hidden within the document. You know, it could be a 25-page document, and one line within the changes from data centers located in the UK to, to North Korea or payment terms will now be held until we deem fit that you know we may use them again we're able to do a comparison between these two documents now again we've done this for a policy but this could be a uh, this could be a statement of work this could be um, this could be any type of document a CV you know a previous example that I've done is comparing two uh, CVs and you know who's the best candidate who should we go for um, we're able to do that comparison, not generate new content, which we can do, but get a comparison between two documents a lot quicker than uh, than we will be able to manually. Uh, 